I want to talk about some of the basics of colorizing an old black and white photograph. And I'm saying basics because this can take a long time. So I want to show you the couple of the, the key elements to making this work. If you want to change the color of a specific area, one of the easiest ways to do that is to start off by making a selection of that area. And as you can see, I'm deliberately, <laughs> deliberately, mind you, making a very poor selection just to show you how easy it is to adjust it. So once I've made the selection, then I add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Let's move this over here. We're going to click the colorize button, and then I just have to decide what color I want his jacket to be, maybe some kind of a blue color. Now, as you can see, it didn't do a very good job in some areas, but because I made a selection first, a layer mask was automatically created. So now I can go in here, let's make our brush a little smaller using the bracket keys, and paint with white any area that should be in color that isn't currently, like this. And if I press the letter X, I can switch to black and mask the parts that are in color and should not be in color. Now, needless to say, this would be a whole lot easier if we had a higher resolution image because ideally what I'd love to do is zoom in like this close and see very accurately. But as you can tell when I'm in here, it's pretty hard to see what I'm doing. But normally, if I was going to colorize a photograph, I would be zooming in, I should say I'd be scanning it at a high enough resolution to allow me to do this kind of zooming in to do the detail work that I need. Okay, so that's sort of tip number one is scan higher than you need. But I'm going to give you another suggestion. You'd obviously you'd end up with a whole bunch of different uh, adjustment layers with uh, layer mask. And the benefit of doing it this way is if you're doing all this work and then someone says, uh, Jimmy never had a blue jacket. He always had a green jacket. Well, now you can say, okay, Jimmy was very innovative and ahead of his time because he wore lime green jackets well before anyone else did. But the point is you can easily change the color simply by double clicking on the adjustment layer. Now let's take a look at how we can try and start working on the flesh tones because that's one of the more challenging aspects. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to bring in my swatches palette, my swatches palette. Okay, let me just bring in my swatches palette. Whew, that was harder than it should have been. And I'm going to select a couple of colors I want to use as my flesh tone. I'm going to click on one color, hold down the uh, control key on Windows, command on the Macintosh to choose another color. And you can see I deliberately picked a little bit overly vibrant flesh tone colors we probably wouldn't normally use. Then I take my gradient tool and we're going to simply create a gradient. Let's use uh, a radial just for the heck of it. I'm just going to try this, see what happens. So I remember I'm on a new layer. I click and drag to create this gradient, which has basically covered up everything. So now I change my blend mode to color like this. So now I get something that looks pretty bad. <laughs> So here's what we need to do. We need to hide almost all of the effects of this. So when I go to add a layer mask, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, and that will automatically hide everything. Now I get my paintbrush, make white my foreground color. Let's get a slightly bigger brush, and I'm going to lower the opacity, and that will allow me to gradually paint the areas back in that I want to be in my initial flesh tone color. And I say initial because we're going to keep working on this. Obviously, that's a little too intense still. So let's just check someone else out. He's not too bad. And again, this is where you'd normally zoom in closer. The nice part is because we deliberately went a little overboard with the layer mask and also the opacity, we can play around with this a little bit to make it more or less obvious. What I would normally do on top of that is try to get a little more flesh tone looking colors, maybe some kind of pinky colors that would be in cheeks and so on, something in here, very light, kind of pinky color, again with a very low opacity, and just start kind of blending that in. That's a little bit intense, but I want you to be able to see it. Let's get rid of that, because that was too much. Let's put the opacity way down, just a little bit like this, highlights and so on. So you can see it's going to take a while, but by doing it this way, the nice part is you end up with 
on the one hand what looks like a very complicated looking layers palette because you have all these different layers oh and by the way I would be naming each one of these just so you knew which one was which but by doing it this way then you can change just about anything very very quickly so there you go just the very basics of how you can start colorizing an old black and white photo so this is what it's like in Windows hmm. looks pretty much the same to me cool I'm Dave Cross see you next time